Drone mesh FC first flight. Feeling my way through the darkness, guided by a beating heart. I can't tell where the journey will end, but I know where to start. Hey, what is up guys and welcome back. So as you saw from the beginning of the video, the Drone Mesh OpenFC F4 flight controller is a huge success, oh, even though it needs a little bit of tuning and beta flight, but other than that, it was performing absolutely phenomenal and um, I was just pushing it and, and I put up a pretty massive setup on this to actually uh, test. So let's talk about the setup before continuing on to the PCB here. So for components, I use the Runcam Swift 2, uh, T-Motor F40s, 2600KV, the V3, I think these are the multi-GP championship motors. And also for ESC, I used Form 1 ESC Dell RC engine because it has a 5-volt output, which is providing the 5-volt to the Open uh, FC here, the Drone Mesh Open FC. The gyro is, on, uh, is an MP6000 gyro, and it just has a 3.3-volt regulator USB and just some other the basic skeleton of a flight controller that's on there. Now, you d if you did notice those oscillations, that's totally fine. One thing, I didn't soft mount it, and uh, I could have soft mounted it, but I chose not to. And on the V2 of this board, this is currently V1. It doesn't have an OSD. V2 has the OSD, and it has 4 millimeter holes for the uh, stack so you can incorporate rubber grommets so this way it'll be soft mounted. You'll see that upcoming very soon. It should arrive on Monday. I should be building it and taking it out for a flight very soon. This one obviously doesn't have the OSD but it's a really nice kit to get started into this project. Now I've originally built the skeleton of an F4 flight controller and today was the first proof that it actually flew. Before that I did have all the proof I needed through the beta flight and in the shop here arming the motors. Everything looked good but today was the official day where I actually took it out flying and it flew spectacular, but as you can tell, it needed a little bit of tuning, but it's tunable, Is but tuning it is absolutely easy. I just didn't have a PC on me to tune it, but the overall performance or any hiccups, I didn't notice anything. Um, 
the oscillations that we were having is 100% not due to noise touching the gyro and again that's why I use the LDO the linear voltage regulator here because it just decreases the amount of noise that could seep through like a switching regulator this is the reason why I chose a pretty massive one too not like those little tiny ones we currently get on the basic flight control or any flight control that we buy online and this proved to me that it's performing very phenomenally and uh, we'll also see its true performance of the current regulator that I have chosen on IC ICM gyro, which uh, should be should make for a very interesting video on the V V3. It will be V2 just has is the same one with a with the OSD and it's been designed slightly different. So currently, if we can set, we can totally say that the V1 af works absolutely perfect. Um, I didn't have any issues, any hiccups. It just performed flawlessly. All right. So before continuing on, a huge shout out to our sponsor, PCBUA, for sponsoring our open hardware flight controller. This is a great place to have your PCB manufactured as well as assembled with great quality and fast service. They also provide a 24-hour express service if you are in a hurry and want your projects in your hands as soon as possible. You can also check their shared project page if you're looking for some fun DIY kits contributed by other users. And they also hold a lot of events and some PCB contents, which you could actually Actually win cash prizes for. I do highly recommend you check out PCBWay and to check out PCBWay check the links down below. Alright guys so let's talk about some of the components I use and again I use the T Motors Dell RC engine the first one and uh, the XUAV VTX and a Runcam Swift 2 here and the receiver I, I use the uh, the one, the one that comes with the FlySky Nirvana, the little tiny micro one. And uh, for controller, I didn't use the Nirvana actually. I used the X Lite with the multi protocol module on there. It's just, I just find it very easy to use. And um, it's really nice to have because I can just switch to, to other uh, receivers in just a, in a heartbeat, which is something really nice to have with that. All right, guys. So let's crack this guy open here. I'm just removing the top cover. I'm also going to need to remove the receiver here now this is the receiver that was receiving the signal from our controller in order to control it and this comes with the FlySky Nirvana it's running the iBus protocol because I didn't set up iBus uh, I didn't put the transistor to enable SBus on the uh, on actually my build when I built the flight controller here but even though it's incorporated into the design you could totally use it now let's just crack open the other sides here all right, so now I've removed the VTX. Now the VTX was getting raw battery voltage from here because that's what it could take. And the five volt in the video uh, lines were going to the uh, camera here because it was just a direct connection because, and again, we don't have an on-screen display on this version just yet. So we don't have to route the video through here. So that's something that I had to do. Also, this flight controller, uh, this ESC has a five volt regulator, which I also apply to the five volt rails here. If you can take a closer look, which is right there. So right here, if you apply five volts to any of these, then you can take five volts from any of them. So that's what I did. Basically, I was powering up the 3.3 volt regulator, which is right here to power everything up from the five volt coming in from the uh, ESC here. And it worked just flawlessly. Now for the motors, which is motor one, two, three, four, we do have the motor output wires coming out from the ESC below the flight controller, which I routed them accordingly to motor one, two, three, and four. And if we take a closer look at the one I have in my hand here, we can see S1, which would be signal one, motor one, S2, S3, and S4. Now, if you don't know how to build a quadcopter, I definitely should recommend you check out some of my videos. I've built many quadcopters on this channel, and it's the same concept with any flight controller and any build video. Very simple, very straightforward, and there's actually less to connect because you don't have OSD and anything of that nature. Now, the overall performance here was, again, remarkable. Even though I didn't even have it soft mounted, I just had them, you know, just stuck to these standoffs here and it was handled in that well. So possibly with soft mounting, especially on the newer version that's going to be coming out, it's going to be even better. And I do have tantalum capacitors hooked up to the 5 volt rail on that one for the OSD to enable us, hopefully, to get us a very nice clean video feed with no OSD flickers, no lines, and we just get really nice, beautiful video feed with the on-screen display going on in that perspective. Now, the overall control, or I mean, setting it up was, was really, really simple. You know, I do also have the UARTs. If we take a closer look at the board, here uh, we can see that I used uh, TX and RX right here for iBus I actually used RX 6 for iBus and uh, if you wanted to use S bus it has a special connection by the USB which is uh, it's very difficult for me to read it from this far but there it is S bus is right there if you wanted to use it but you have to put in your transistor right there however if you take a closer look on the one that I built I actually ordered some transistors and I'm still waiting for them to arrive and this is why I couldn't run S bus right out of the box 
but um, you should be able to run SBUS and it goes right there as you can tell that's where the transistor goes however I didn't have it installed and again because I'm waiting for it to arrive so I can install it and I'll be able to run SBUS so that's the reason why I had to jump to IBUS instead which is why I use this one as you can tell I took 5 volts from the 5 volt rail ground from the ground rail and I routed this to RX6 which is receive 6 so I set up the URL, uh, serial RX in Betaflight on uh, UART6 here and um, yeah, it just it just works beautiful. Now for the firmware, if you're wondering what firmware it's running, it's running the Fury F4 firmware. And once the OSD is added, it'll still run the same firmware, but there's also another one called Fury F4 OSD firmware. So that's the reason why I also chose this firmware and to work from that firmware up into what we have today. So it has two versions, one with OSD and one without OSD, which I, I thought would, would be very important instead of completely redesigning the whole basic skeleton schematic of this if you wanted to go ahead and build your own. Now I have not released the OSD version yet, it will be released once tested, like I always say, once I test them, make sure they're okay, like 90% chance that they're working great, I think, then I release it to the public. However, this one is 100% and it works actually perfect, beyond perfect, which I was very happy with how it came out, being the first flight controller I've ever built, designed, and had manufactured. Um, it just it just gives a lot of hope and I can't wait for other people's designs to start showing up soon Especially once I finish the OSD version too. now and again If you're curious how to get access to all these files and build your own flight controller I'll have a link down below It'll take you to the forum which will teach you or tell you everything you want to know about this the the playlist that I have about this how to build one, how to order one, and uh, how to modify one if you wanted to. I have everything open source for everybody, so you guys can uh, just go ahead and let your imaginations go loose with that one. So, just wanted to come in and tell you that this was a huge success, and again, a huge shout out to PCBWay. If it wasn't for them actually pushing me and pressuring me, saying, come on, you can do something, you can do it. Um, I wouldn't have probably had the courage to even try my first project. It was actually because of them I was able to try my first project. And um, I think this is my fifth PCB project, to be honest, which um, I find pretty insane, actually, pretty spectacular. I mean, this took, a, this took about, I think, a week and a half to design and develop, um, but longer to test because of the weather. But um, I, I'm just very, I can't explain it to you, especially when you get yours and if you're going to build your own. Not only that, you'll learn a lot. You also, this is probably the easiest flight controller to fix because um, everything is just laid out for you and you can you can just figure out what's the problem right away on this, which is something really nice. Uh, if you know how to read the schematic and which is what I'm trying to teach you in the playlist that I have uh, in the project page, if you're curious how to, how to read this stuff, I'm, I'm also be showing you the videos on how to go about doing that. All right, guys, so I do highly recommend you pick up your own, try it out, try the first build. This is the, going to be the easiest build ever. And why do I say that? Because the second build with the OSD is going to be a lot more, uh, just, it's not going to be more difficult, it's just going to be a lot more components, just a couple more components. You're going to have a couple more resistors, a couple more capacitors, uh, the OSD chip, a another uh, resonator or crystal, 27 megahertz crystal for the on-screen display, which will be on one side. The other side is just the, you know, the, the flight control and the gyro. And on the back side will be the OSD on the newer version, uh, which you'll be seeing very soon here. So yeah, if you want to go ahead and check out this project and or contribute to this open hardware project, check out dronemeshforum.com and also check out PCBWay if you wanted to purchase yours. I'll leave it linked down below to purchase it. Once you click on the below to purchase this, just make sure you choose one ounce copper. So it'll be like five bucks because if you choose two ounce copper, which you don't need, it'll probably jump up to 200 bucks, which, which you really don't need. Just choose one ounce copper because we're not running an all one flight controller or anything. It's just a basic flight controller here. And um, yeah, and all the files are open for everybody. If you want to go ahead and check those out and modify it and build your own flight controller, you can go ahead and do that. And make sure you subscribe to this channel and check the playlist. I am constantly adding videos to the playlist showing you uh, the basics of how to design your own from the official skeleton schematic that I've designed for the drone mesh open FC F4 flight controller so I really want to take you guys to the next level and uh, I want to see people's contributions because that's what really that's the only reason why I'm really doing this I mean they're, they're, they're you know I'm not I'm not I'm not expecting to sell these here um, but people are actually requesting for DIY kits so I'm trying to figure out a way to get a DIY kit done um, for a good price because if it's overpriced, there's really no need for a DIY kit So that's the whole idea here But but again, my idea is to have everybody benefit or at least get some sort of knowledge into PCB manufacturing That's the whole reason why I created this series or this playlist and um, also, you know, this is just one of those testing videos just to um, I, I just can't explain it guys. It was just uh, it's really awesome that this thing actually worked this beautiful um, I'm, I'm just ecstatic. I mean, I can't even find the right word for it and um, yeah 
Well, uh, if you guys have any questions, any ideas or anything, drop down to the forum. I do have the correct sections for all of these things. If you had an idea, you know, other people can discuss it with you. And I can, if I like something, I might even work on your idea. For example, we have one for the uh, silverware firmware, which is basically a software uh, or, 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 yeah, a firmware for the, the toy quadcopters that you can actually flash and then it basically enable acro mode and all these things. I have a couple of videos that will be upcoming very soon on that. I did purchase, I think, six Eoshin E010s because I have a couple ideas to do with those and that firmware and possibly design a new board for one of those, which, which should be pretty interesting, I think. I think it'll be pretty cool as well. And, well... That's it, guys. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section. Um, I thank you for all your support. I mean, it, it means the world to me. And if it wasn't for you guys, I would not be here today. I would not be doing this. I'd probably be somewhere else doing something else. But I'm very fortunate and very, um, I'm just very grateful that um, I am here today with you guys. And if, it was basically all of your support and all of you, just every, each and every one of you from my patrons to everything that is making everything happen and everything possible, which is just... Um, just I just thank you guys for it, which is just really awesome. And again, this is just the beginning of the road. Who knows where this is going to evolve? I've already got the V2 out. Um, once I build it, test it, then I'll come back. I'll try to make them into one videos. Um, <clears throat> and well, that's it, guys. I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. And uh, if you do like this content, please consider joining my Patreon. I really need all the support I can get. And um, yeah, well, that's it, guys. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.